Is Google doing creepy things to us? A new documentary says yes. Google crosses the creepy line every day. Before I explain the creepy line, let's review how we got here. Allison, can you explain what internet is? Just a few decades ago, a time when people my age didn't understand computers. Mark Zuckerberg, who was a student at Harvard, decided he wanted to create a social media platform basically to meet girls and to make friends. We were college students, right? And yeah. we were just building stuff because we, we thought it was cool. Larry Page and Sergey Brin decide they wanted to create the ultimate search engine for the internet. They had a better index than other indexes that were around. Theirs was not the first search engine. And it was just leaps and bounds ahead of services like Yahoo, AltaVista, and quickly became the clear winner in the space just from a technology basis. Google put answers to your question on one page and ranked them. Spiders around the internet taking pictures of web pages and analyzing the links between the web pages and using that to make some assumptions about relevance. Now, they had to figure out, how do we make money off this? All you do is track people's searches. Your search history is very, very informative. That's going to tell someone immediately whether you're Republican or Democrat, whether you like one breakfast cereal versus another. Then they could sell you to advertisers. So they could hook up the umbrella makers with people searching for umbrellas, basically send you uh, targeted ads. That is where Google gets more than 90% of its revenue. They don't sell you anything. They sell you. Fine. Because they know about me, I get ads on my screen that might actually appeal to me. So what's the problem? Well, the filmmaker says this is the problem. They are constructing a profile of you, and that profile is real, it's detailed, it's granular, and it never goes away. And what I didn't know until I watched the creepy line is how far Google goes to follow us on the web. They were getting a lot of information from people using the search engine, but if people went directly to a website, uh-oh, that's bad, because now Google doesn't know that. So they developed a browser, which is now the most widely used browser in the world, Chrome. By getting people to use Chrome, they were able now to collect information about every single website you visited, whether or not you were using their search engine. But of course, even that's not enough, right? Then Google wanted to know, what do people do when they're not online? As soon as you connect to the internet, Android uploads to Google a complete history of where you've been that day. So what? They're giving me information. They are giving you information, but to the extent that somebody can do something for you, they can do something to you. Peter Schweitzer wrote the creepy line. I love these services. Well, you're seeing all the positive good side of it. What yeah. you're not Your seeing... Your movie's all about the bad side. <laughs> That's why people hate the media. The question comes down to, are they abusing their power? And I think you can make a very important, powerful, compelling case that they are. His documentary suggests regulation. Media companies are regulated. Newspapers are regulated. Telecommunications providers are regulated. But regulation often makes things worse for consumers. And politicians are too clueless to do it well. Watch Senator Hatch embarrass himself. Well, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. You want regulation? That's going to make it better? I think one of the ways you deal with Google's market concentration and its massive control of search is put it under the same shackles that other media companies do. Shackles aren't good. <laughs> I mean, government has the guns. Government can always step in right. at some point if the people find Google just doing evil. Yeah. But, but to start it now. I would rather say, here are the ground rules that other media companies have to subscribe to. Google should be put in the same category. Now, I don't presume to know what, if anything, ought to be done to make sure Facebook and Google don't harm the world. But the documentary does make a compelling case that these giant companies do creepy things. There's what I call the creepy line, and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line, but not cross it. It's an interesting word, creepy, right? Because it's a, it's a word that connotes horror. I don't think the typical ethical person says, I'm going to push right up to the line of creepy and stop there. Because creepy is really bad. A creepy mugger is worse than a mugger. The mugger wants your money. God only knows what the creepy mugger wants. It's more than your money. 
In my second and concluding video on the creepy line, we look at how a few people in Silicon Valley secretly shape what we think and maybe who will govern us. I am running for president of the United States. Last election, Silicon Valley tried but failed to elect Hillary. But next election, the creepy line says, If the major players in tech right now and that's mainly Google and Facebook, banded together and got behind the same candidate. They could shift 10% of the vote in the United States with no one knowing that they had done anything. 